Welcome to Hoppers Bazaar World Presents the Miss Demure Show, and welcome to my podcast. Oh my God, <laughs> I tell you, season 24 is still trucking on, I tell you. We're like the little engine that could. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And we have a special guest here tonight. She knows that she can. Oh my God, oh my God. Please welcome back a friend of Bazaar World, Rachel Evans Need, Grant Rider. Hello, darling, how are you? I'm lovely. How are you today? I am absolutely fabulous. I mean, I'm, you know, just a second ago we were talking about me going through menopause. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that old song from that old 80s group climax, The Men Are Paused. <laughs> I went there. Oh, that was bad. But hello, darling. Welcome back. And how are you? I'm excited to be here. I'm really well, welcome. Thank yes. you for having me back. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So what have you been up to? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Isn't this how we started the last conversation yes. where I just started laughing? Uh, <laughs> Your jo you, joy. Yes. Just like, you know what, it was like the, the um, uh, D DNC. It's all about joy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And you exude joy. I really believe that. I feel that energy from you. And we need that right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I have been very, very busy. Mm -hmm. um, when we last spoke... I was freelancing. Uh -huh. um, I'm still doing that a little bit on the side, mm -hmm. but I am now uh, the director of grant making and impact at CultureWorks. Well, congratulations. Yay. Thank you. I'm in my seventh month there. And how does that feel? Do you feel, um, do you feel like you're, you, you've officially moved in or? Mm -hmm. That is my home. Wonderful. So yeah. this was meant to be. It was meant to be. So you have your sleeves rolled up. I have my sleeves rolled up. I'm doing a lot of work. Wow. <laughs> so what what's the first project that you started working on when you arrived? Um, well, I the the director of grant making basically oversees and administers mm -hmm. the grant application process mm -hmm. uh, for the Community Arts Grant, mm -hmm. which is a large grant funded by CultureWorks. Okay. And then I also administer uh, two grants for Montgomery County Arts and Cultural District. Mm -hmm. The Special Projects Grant, which is for small to medium-sized or arts organizations in the region, in Montgomery County. And then the Artist Opportunity Grant uh, for individual artists in Montgomery County. Uh, which that one has a due date of the 20th of next month. So. Oh, wow. Yes. And, 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 and <laughs> so you're climbing Mount Everest right now. I, yes. My predecessor left right as everything really started full speed ahead. Uh -huh. And so I had two weeks with uh, my predecessor, who uh, is Karen Maynard, and uh, she is an awesome, wonderful person, was very helpful to me and supportive even beyond um, those two weeks and really had to hit the ground running. So it's only, I would say, within the last probably couple months that I've really started to feel at home in in the job. So I'm, I'm really quite happy. I was hopeful at the beginning that it was going to be a fit. It is a fit. Oh my it God! So it's yeah. it's all about the universe, right? This was meant to be. It was meant to be, and I love the people I work with. They're wonderful, wonderful people. Well, congratulations! Yeah. Oh Thank my you. God! And you just recently moved, also. Yes, that was that was a trial. Uh, so <laughs> I uh, I had. Uh, I was living in Dayton for about a year, right on the Miami River, uh, and I'd just cross the river, and I'd be right there in Riverscape, uh -huh. and I loved that, uh, in the Metro Park there, uh, and then I moved back to Northern Kentucky to sell, uh, to help uh, sell a house uh, with uh, my best friend for life. Uh -huh. <laughs> we co-owned a house, and... Um, and then I moved back up here to Dayton about three months ago and bought a house. And I live in Westwood. I'm keeping it real in Westwood. You're keeping it 100%. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. And your house has a lot of history to it, right? 
uh, in Westwood? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it does. It, and it's a little larger than what I need, but I like to spread out. I uh-huh. want room to grow. Um, and yes. so I And have, character, right? Lots of character. It does have a lot of character. Yeah. Well, that's perfect. That's what you need, right? I do. I need a space that I can make my own. Exactly. And then it just inspires you to be even more creative, right? Yes. And I have my two dogs with me now, uh-huh. which I did not have for the first year I was living in Dayton. So oh, wow. I love my dogs. Oh, yeah. We should introduce our dogs. Oh, my God. Yes. They can need a play date. <laughs> We'll make a play date. Oh, that would let's let's definitely make that happen. Oh my God! What I love about dogs, to go back to the theme of joy, uh-huh. they live with abandon. I mean, if they're gonna eat a stick, they are gonna eat that stick. They're gonna eat you that know, stick gonna, like there's no tomorrow. They I tell are, you, uh-huh. they just, they're gonna put they so much just, love into it. Oh my yeah, God! Yeah, they just. I love them. Yeah. <laughs> They're a good example of how to live in the world. Well, they make us better human beings. They really do. They do. They teach us humility, to be humble, to just just look at life through rose-colored glasses. They really, <laughs> I mean, they really Which do give me that. Which you're wearing today, by yes, the way. Yes, I am. You know, I'm feeling very retro. <laughs> I actually had some tortoise shell glasses that I wanted to wear today, but I misplaced them, so I just grabbed these, and I figure it goes with the green. So you know. <laughs> it goes perfectly. Ta da! Yes. <laughs> oh great. my god! Oh my god! So you have so much to do. Oh my god! Your your <laughs> list is like. Did you bring your scroll in? It probably could roll it out. It's probably the. The, as long as the Great Wall of China, right? <laughs> oh, friend, I'm writing so much right now. Uh-huh. I um, I am going to be working mostly from home for the next four weeks, and I'm really looking forward to that. I'll still go into the office for meetings and stuff like that, uh-huh. and um, say hey to my my workmates, my peeps. But uh, otherwise, I'm going to be home working hard and uh, using spare spare time to write. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, my God. I tell you, you have come full circle because, you know, the last time you were on, you were telling your story. And this is a vision. You're a visionary. And it goes mm-hmm. back to your your stage and theater. And this was. I loved that conversation. Yeah, we had about it was theater. wonderful. Yeah. I really did. Mm-hmm. Um, I I can't imagine what my life would be having not gotten that degree. Mm-hmm. I it just informs how I think about pretty much everything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I it loved theater. Yeah. I I loved I loved the world building aspect of it mm-hmm. and that it was that concrete and at the same time that transient. Mhm. Cuz that is life. It really is life, you mm-hmm. know, and you're giving people a window into that world. And 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 using their imaginations and and all the things that they have bottled up or things they want to show show and 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 show joy and mm-hmm. and you get you get to take them on the journey and now yeah. you get to do it in a different way you get to help them to help themselves create their own journey right and it's a it's a different gesture with the yeah. grant making what I like about it is actually demystifying the grant writing process for them mm-hmm. so that it is less intimidating and more accessible because these are community grants uh-huh they are are available to the community mm-hmm. and it, if there's something intimidating about the process or you know that that sets you back a bit and makes you feel like your work is not worthy of an application then I feel like I'm not doing my job something's exactly gone wrong. exactly you know you're taking care of you're 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 a caretaker in that sense in that sense yes yeah I, and it's it, very um I have to say this and you're gonna find this very cheesy but the way that you're taking care of these people it's very demure it's very mindful <laughs> <laughs> I read your article so talk about your article a little bit for so, people who have not read it yet. Oh, my God. So, folks, if you get a chance, you can still go to uh, um, uh, USA Today uh, 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 digital.com 
and the whole TikTok trend of uh, the whole demure trend. And who would have thunk <laughs> that I, you know, being connected, that would have a moment like this. It's just been absolutely wonderful. And I got to, I was able to get in there and say everything that I feel about my experience mm -hmm. and what being demure means to me. Mm -hmm. And everyone has a little demure in them, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just, it, we're just in a different space and a different universe about it now. But I just think it's about kindness and just mm -hmm. simple kindness and treating people with grace and dignity. Yeah. And anyone can do that, you know? You can be a you can be a hard rock and roll chick <laughs> and you can be you can still have a heart of gold and, and, and still be demure in how you tell your story and, and, and empower other people. That's demure also. So it has a it's it has a totally different meaning with today's world. Yeah. I told I told somebody yesterday, I said, I'm so happy that I moved to Dayton finally. I have always, always loved funk and punk. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And, and so to You are here. <laughs> I'm in the heart of it now. In oh, my oh, my God. Oh, my God. What... What I really, um, I just really love a good bass line. <laughs> I'm a sucker for a good bass line. But um, now I'm thinking about what you said about Demure. And and will you say more about it? Like I said, I read the article, but I want to hear you talk about that word a little well, bit. Well, um, you know, at one point in the article, I, I talk about all the television heroes that I had growing up. and And, you know, when I think about, Florida Evans of Good Times. She was very demure because she kept that family together. And she, you know, it wasn't just about her being a homemaker and having food on the table. I mean, she was their 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 teacher, their nurse, you know, that she uh, like all women, they have so many different roles and she did it with grace. And she kept them they were living they were they they had a very poor life, but they were rich in other ways because she kept them rich because she kept them knowing about dignity and love and, 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 and self-respect and all of that. And those type of women, I grew up watching them on TV, you know, Mary Tyler Moore mm -hmm. being a pioneer, you know, and, and Diane Carroll as Julia, the, I mean, being a nurse, a, a, a single woman, I mean, you know, for, for that, for that time period, that was just unheard of. And right. she did it. These women did it. And they inspired me. They inspired what Ms. Demure is. Yeah. And, and uh, oh, my God, Elizabeth Montgomery. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. You know, and that mixed marriage. And, and you know, mm -hmm. Elizabeth Montgomery and William Asher, you know, the pilot was filmed in late 1963. Mm -hmm. And they were friends with the, uh, the Kennedys. Mm -hmm. And they weren't sure if they should do the show, but they said, you should do this show. Wow. Because it's, it's going to teach. Yeah. It's going to have a teachable moment during the civil rights era. Yeah. And it did. Yeah. And so all these women, they, they make up who Ms. Demure is. Yeah. And so I am so grateful to Ms. LeBron for creating this moment because by her doing it, I get to tear, tell my story and share it with more people and, and, and let them understand and know that the, every, every woman has a little bit of Demure in them. Yeah. And it's not just about wearing gloves and, you know, and, and drinking tea, even though I do on my program. But it's not <laughs> just about that. It's, 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 there's so much more. Yeah. And we need to take that energy and that sisterhood and go to the polls. Yeah. That's what we need to take that energy. The most demure thing that you can do for your sisters is take their hand, especially if they're your, your mom, your grandma, and take their hand and, and, and take them to the polls and make sure they have water, make sure that they're hydrated. That's the demure gesture that you can do for them. Yeah. So they can pass that baton and that sisterhood, you know? Yeah. One of my, one, another one of my heroes is, is Wonder Woman, Linda Carter. Yeah, Wonder Woman, she the perfect something. Wonder Woman. Because, yeah. you know, not only is she, she is so American, not because she has blue eyes and she wears red, white, and blue, but she's, <laughs> she's, 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 she's a Mexican American. Mm -hmm. She's, when you look at her, you see so many things. And even though she's, she's very powerful and she's statuesque, she's very, 
she's very demure. She's very, you know, d d there's there's something angelic about her. She's and the women can soft, have all of that. She's very soft spoken. Exactly. Yeah. But yet she has power. Yeah. yeah. And girls, you can still have power, but don't forget that part of your femininity also. You could have it all. You can do it all. Mr. Muir has done it all. <laughs> and and I am so proud of that article. Guess what guess what just happened to me in, in the last 40 hours? One of my friends who teaches at Northmont High School, she invited me back. To, uh, Mr. Muir uh, was able to visit the high school uh, last year, and I got to speak before the student body. Wow. So now I'm going to be able to go back again, and I'm going to talk about this whole demure trend. And, and hopefully what I'm telling you now, I can tell them and, and hopefully that they will get inspired and they will be able to share that story with many people and, and, and everyone can, you know, sort mm -hmm. of show mm -hmm. how demure they can be. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's, uh, it's interesting to kind of think through how we connect ourselves to the matrilineal line. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember when I was in college. Well, no, I, I'm gonna. Can I tell the long version? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so when I'm 11, um, I look at my mother and I say, "Mom, Dad's last name does not suit me. Mm -hmm. uh, our last name was Wartman, W-A-R-T-M-A-N." And I looked at my mom, who in all of my memories is washing the dishes. Like if I have a memory of my mother, she's doing the dishes. Um, so in this memory, she's washing the dishes and I stand next to her and I say, mom, uh, dad's name is not appropriate for me. Uh, I do not like war. I do not like warts and I'm not a man. Um, and and she just kind of laughed, like, just kind of laughed. Like, what do you do with that when you have an 11 year old, you know, feminist in the house uh, who doesn't even know, you know, what that means so yet. So you were a suffragette as a little girl. You started early. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I tend to think about language uh -huh. and, and words a lot. And obviously that's not really what that name means. It's German uh -huh. and it was translation, but that didn't matter to me. Um, so then I got into college and I really thought, you know, my parents had a divorce at that point. And I thought, you know what, I, I, I need to just change this last name. It's, a, it's not a great name for an actor. You know, this I can never use this name in public. <laughs> my my dad's side of the family, I feel bad saying all of this, but this is genuinely how I felt at the time. <laughs> They're lovely people, but that is just how I felt. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll, I want to change my name to my grandma's, my maternal grandma's name, Evans. And then I was like, that won't work. That's my grandpa's name. And then I was like, I'll change it to my grandma's maiden name. And I was like, that won't work. That's her dad's name. <laughs> and I was like, it, it occurred to me as if for the first time, right, that we live in a patrilineal society. <laughs> like it just, as if I had never realized this before until like I wanted a name that, suited me uh, as I identified in that moment. Um, May I ask you, mm -hmm. when you think about your grandfather, what, what comes to mind to you? I love my grandfather. So his, 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 I love his attachment to that was a lovely experience for you. Yes, yeah. yes. But I, I, but my grandma, my, my mom's mom has a very special place in my heart. You know, I, I think of grandmas as, I think for a lot of kids anyway, I know this is true for me. This is like, that is unconditional love. Like, that's it right there in the grandma for me, you know. Um, and she never had to discipline me because just the idea of disappointing this woman was enough for me not to cuss, for example, in front of her and be 
as you say, demure. Yes. Um, she's very Irish Catholic, and uh. she is the reason that I dye my hair red. Um, I, I am not a natural red. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, but it's for her. It's for my That's grandma. That's lovely. Yeah. It's just a way of keeping her close. Um, so when um, my best friend for life and I divorced uh, about a year and a half ago, I guess now, I took that as an opportunity to do exactly that. And so Rachel Evans' need is matrilineal. Evans is my mother's maiden name, or my grandfather's name. Mm -hmm. And Need, N-E-A-D, is my grandma's maiden name. Oh, wow, that's lovely. Yeah, and, and so it does, it keeps my grandfather in the mix, which I feel is absolutely appropriate. Mm -hmm. I identify of my siblings. I love my siblings um, and close with one sister in particular, but I really kind of identify more with my brother and his middle name is Evans. So the fact that I took it as the first of two last names uh -huh. uh, is a symmetry between me and my brother. And I love that about the name. And my pronouns at this point are they, she. So it all works out. It's all good. But it is still a matrilineal line in my imagination, if that wow. makes sense. Wow, wow. So that's not quite demure, you know. But I think about our relationships with our names as a story that we can tell and and you can think that through i like to go by rachel I, there's a lot of history and attachment to that name and i tend to introduce myself that way but i keep waiting for ren to catch r-e-n mm -hmm. um and it has with a few people so okay. that's special well ren yeah right. r-e-n yeah ren. I and i have a ren tattoo right oh here. wonderful yeah i've never and yeah, I've always wanted to get a tattoo, <laughs> but it's, it's just, I don't know. It, it would have to be the most unique, and and I've never been able. You know, it's almost like it's like buying a house or, or buy, <laughs> buying a dress. It, it's got to be something that just really strikes you. And I yeah. I've never been able to, to to connect with something that would just hit me. Of course. I guess if I were gonna get a tattoo, it would probably be Elizabeth Montgomery, maybe uh -huh. a little Samantha. But <laughs> but talking about grandmothers, um, if I had to think about the perfect grandmother for me, it would have been Aunt Clara. Uh. She was the perfect grandmother that I wish I had. You know, okay. I lost my grandmother very when I was very young, okay. and I didn't have the most positive experience. So okay. I didn't. I didn't have that spoiled you know so i <laughs> had to find other Not, ways to get yeah. that energy you know yeah. but um yeah. yeah it it's different for everybody oh yeah you know? absolutely absolutely um, but for me she I know my mother's experience of my grandma when she was growing up was not the experience I've had, right? But doesn't that usually skip a generation, right? Yeah, I it, think it depends so. On, yeah. I watch how my mom treats her grandchildren now, you know, my sister's kids, and I'm like, where were you when I was growing up? And what is her perspective <laughs> when you say that? Does she laugh? Yeah, she laughs. <laughs> mistakes on you Rachel and I'm like you sure did <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny oh I'm my god still, still working through all that shit oh I, I understand I understand <laughs> it's like poor there, mothers there, there's a test run and then there's the actual <laughs> yeah oh my god the rehearsal right yes <laughs> yes well I was yeah. a rehearsal for my parents and then <laughs> yes, the yes oh my right. god but you know but at the same time I wouldn't wish some of the things that happened to me when I was younger I wouldn't wish it on anyone but it really made me hungry to become a better version of myself mm -hmm. it made me search for myself and go through analysis and mm -hmm. and like this Friday I have my therapy appointment by the way you know it's 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 you know I'm a firm believer in therapy. oh my god yeah you know we, we heal thyself right mm -hmm. yeah I mean we self-care is so important and and you know I have to listen to my own advice with that because even though I'm in therapy I have um, one of the things I need to work on is um, I've been doing too much lately mm -hmm. and it's it's affected my self-care. Mm -hmm. So I have to learn to pull back a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's very hard for me to say no. 
It really <laughs> is. And and sometimes to my detriment. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, you know, I'm, I really believe in self hypnosis or, mm. or just being a visionary where you just sort of picture yourself doing something to heal yourself and then it comes to fruition. And, and that's kind of where I'm at now. I, I need to make that become my ra reality just so I can start to slow down a little yeah. bit. Yeah. 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 Slowing down is never a bad thing. It's not. I never thought I'd be this busy at this age, but it just, it just, the volume just seems to be getting louder. And, and, yeah. and I, it's not that I don't appreciate it, but, um, you know, you have to really learn not to burn yourself out. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I think when um, Aaron and I, you know, were going through our separation, again, that's been about a year and a half. Me, yeah. Yeah, about a year and a half that started. Um, I, I was just exhausted all the time, yeah. you know. And it, it was a really important reminder to, to just rest. Mm -hmm. And I did a lot of resting for a year. <laughs> uh, and... Um, a lot of therapy and um, lined up my peeps, as I like to say, mm -hmm. you know, where I'd have phone calls with a different friend on the nights I didn't have therapy. And I, I literally just lined them up because, you know, I had just moved to Dayton and it was a new job and, and thing, you know, you have bad days at work and that kind of stuff. And it was, it was a lot to process and it, it would have been very easy to feel isolated, I think, but I really never did. And I never felt lonely. Um, I, I really have good, good friends and um, I'm grateful, actually, for the time that I had in that apartment on the Miami River mm -hmm. to, like, walk out every morning yeah. and, and have that view as mm -hmm. the sun rose over the river with mm -hmm. over downtown. Mm -hmm. You know, how fortunate for me. Oh, absolutely. And, yes. um, but it it is difficult when you find yourself in in those positions yeah. you know and then to go from one career as an academic at nku to a different career and only last there like a year and some months because it's just not the right fit that mm -hmm. you don't know what the right fit is and then to make that leap into freelance and then to make that leap into culture works and and it's just been a huge amount of transition in the last And it can years. be overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think the only way that I I really was able to manage it was just to stay in the present moment to make sure I had the support that I needed. And um, even now like I'm going through some tense emotional stuff and you know I, I talked to my supervisor and I just said I would really like to be able to work from home for a month and I'll still come in and be in meetings and for events in person but I really need some time um, and I can keep up with my work at home and 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 write a lot mm -hmm. and and have like my own voice my own person be the dominant mm -hmm. you know environment that I'm in rather than always having to think of myself in relation with my friends at this office, a social setting. And I, I love, love them. Yeah, I love but. them. You know, and it's not about anybody having having done anything, right, that upset me. That's not the emotional part of any of this. It, it's really just a transitional space I'm in right now. And, and to, you know, we've, I feel like there are these sacred moments in a life, right, where your your identity or your your just sense of self goes through some sort of a transformation, whatever it might be, right? I mean, that's adolescence right there. But to to 
to honor that and to give that the space and the time that it deserves and that it needs. And like a lot of times culturally, we don't really have those kinds of ceremonies so much. We have some, but I, I don't know, I'm 52. What's so special about that age, right? <laughs> Uh, well, you come into your own, though. You do. Yeah. And, and and to make a leap out of a career you've had for 20 years, mm-hmm. is that alone is it's a lot to kind of a process, mm-hmm. you know. So it... Because you're just... You know, so, you're, you know it, and even if you love what you do, if you do it for a long time, it becomes routine also. And then when you have to, you know, you have to flip the switch and then do something totally different it just it just throws your whole system out of whack and you're just yeah but it also brings to, so yeah. much growth yeah right? oh yes you absolutely know, like yeah. i think of who i was a year ago even mm-hmm. and i'm like i'm a totally different person mm-hmm. now than i was a year ago my god um and you know i've always like given myself probably too much credit for being self-aware and self-reflective because I've believed in therapy for so long and gone for so long. But there really is something about the aging process where I, um, I wouldn't say like I'm, uh, uh, I wouldn't say I'm a Buddhist with a capital B or anything, but there is this idea in Buddhism that I really love, which is that, which is very different, I think, from Christianity. And it's just the idea that as you age, that part of what you're doing through meditation is releasing kind of the conditions that you've been raised into, right? To believe that these these ideas that have been or practices that have been handed down to you these these things that people have told you about yourself and and you buy into it in a way and it shapes who you are and and that really what is happening as you age is the release of these conditions the release of these voices that don't belong to you so that as you age you are becoming closer and closer to your actual essence Oh and my I, God! You hit it right you know, on the head of the nail. Well, yes. I mean, well, I didn't, but it's kind no, of but a, I, it's I, a Buddhist I, thing. Yeah, but I, I feel <laughs> that you know, I, I've, yeah. I've always thought of myself as a uh, an extrovert, mm-hmm. and uh, but I'm a Capricorn, and most Capricorns, they they, they love to be social, mm-hmm. but we love we love our privacy, mm-hmm. and and our privacy and rest is how we get recharged, mm-hmm. and. I'm at the point in my life where it is so much more clear to me now mm. that I am an extrovert and I like being alone and and it's 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 everything to me now and yeah. and and it's it's every year becomes more and more and more important. I need to have my private time. It's it's yeah. just everything. And if I don't, I just I feel like I could possibly go mad. Well, Even we- though I'm this overly social person, it's <laughs> it's weird. It's like we're two people in one. You need the balance. You need the balance. You need the balance. Yeah. You yeah. know, and and I think, you know, when I think of extroversion or introversion, because I'm an introvert, but I'm very social, right? And and really, I think, like, I, I, I went through this phase where I was reading up on all this stuff because I love the Myers-Briggs personality test. Um, and it kind of introduced me to introversion and extroversion. And really, it's just about how you gain energy, you know, whereas extroverts gain energy from social activity and other people. Introverts lose energy. <laughs> it's not it's not the same thing as shyness. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, and so I'm very, very social. And I think people who have known me. For a longer time like knew me in my 20s and 30s they understand i'm an introvert but people as i think especially up here in dayton like people who are meeting me don't realize that i'm an introvert and i i look i will have to tell people well and they know you from your, your theater background also well yes i have the theater background and um and I love language, so I, I love to talk. Like, I think of what we're doing right now. I mean, this is still spoken word, right? I mm-hmm. mean, I get that we're not exactly reciting in lyrics or anything, but this is spoken word. Mm-hmm. It's artful. 
um, we're being contemplative and thoughtful and the language we're choosing. We even had a conversation about words a moment ago. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's we're a, being very mindful right now. <laughs> we're being very mindful. <laughs> That's right. And, and so that, and very social. And, but you see my, like right now, I, I'm in my costume mode. I'm, I'm Ms. Demure. As yes. Daryl, I'm very just sort of, you know, I've noticed that. Yeah, I'm 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 very withdrawn, and when I'm around my other friends and we're out and about, they want to pull 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 Ms. Demure out, and and <laughs> and I I you know sometimes I just want to just be, you know, sort of you chill. Just want to be Daryl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's I still struggle with that. Interesting. Yeah. I I I love um, I. I love getting dressed in the morning, it, 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 it be, and I know again it's the theater thing. But I, anytime you're putting clothes on, it's a costume. The only time we're not wearing a costume RuPaul. is when yes. it's we when were we're born naked, naked and we're we're, we're in drag. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know, and and it may be that you you have you have a uniform, you know, mm -hmm. that that suits you. And I, I I do I do have uniforms, things that I go back to over and over again, right? But that, that's still about, it's a, it's a way of presenting yourself to other people um, and to have fun with that. I have fun with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have fun with it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I love, I love getting dressed up. Um, I remember a couple weeks ago, uh, some friends of mine, we went to a concert in Columbus. We went to see the um, uh, ABC Mm -hmm. sort of from the new wave era of the early 80s and i got all dolled up and it was about 110 in the theater but yeah. we still had a great time too and uh, it was too hot oh my <laughs> god it was so hot in that theater like literally the air conditioning they had fans on with the air conditioning and people wouldn't stand up and dance because they would just <laughs> oh because it was that hot it was that hot i mean oh. it was so hot you could fry an egg on the pavement that's how hot it was <laughs> well. but i got to you know i get to socialize and and it was wonderful i had a wonderful time and i do i do enjoy that aspect of my life it's just like you said balance trying yeah. to find balance yeah yeah um so many um evenings and mornings walking along the river you know when i was living for that first year in dayton mm -hmm. and just listening I, I would always go to where the rapids were at and then i would just sit and i would listen to the water like the soft trickles of slowness oh, and it's then perfect. at the same time yeah. like the noise of the rapids as they mm -hmm. hit you know and how you can hear like those two different aspects of the water the fast the loud the kind of leaping forward into mm -hmm. the into what comes next and then that like quiet little slow moving trickle that's steady and doesn't doesn't change speed you know and how you can hear those two sounds simultaneously operating in the same body of water uh, is a metaphor for me of life See, I love that about you. You are still in touch with that. And we live in a world where this has completely <laughs> controlled us right now. And, and <laughs> right now, you know, I'm an activist. And so I have to use this to, to get my message out. And, and especially now in this political environment. And, and it, you know, I, it's so important. I, and I, and I, I love doing what I do. But at the same time, I need to you know, sometimes check out mm -hmm. and go listen to a spring or, mm -hmm. or the birds chirping or or even some music, you know, to yeah. listen to some jazz just yeah. so I can check out and and just reconnect with myself. So I love that about you, that you're doing that and, and you're always connected to that. Because yeah. this, this whole generation now, they they listen to music, but they don't listen to music where, where they're listening to a whole album from beginning to end where, where they're completely out of touch with reality. They're just in that space. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I don't know if that's their fault, right? No, I mean, no, no, that, but I, 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 my heart breaks for the them. Yeah. yeah, they're born into a certain, you know, like I was saying before, like 
you're born into kind of structures and systems yeah. and, and a language, a vocabulary, and, and it informs your sense of reality. Mm -hmm. And then to, to reach a place where you're able to play with that sense of reality and realize, okay, well, what do I actually want my reality to look like? What do I want my environment to feel like? What kind of energies do I want to bring into it? Exactly. And um, I think, you know, I've always been drawn to musicians, you know, um, and especially that bass line, right? And, and mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. rhythm section, and the heartbeat and all of that. Um, and the funk and the punk, um, you know, like sounds that kind of rough it up a little bit mm -hmm. and, 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 and um, yeah, like, like you're, not, whole... you're not expecting to hear something and then you hear it, mm -hmm. you know, um, that atonality of it. Um, really love all of that. Really good jam session. Yeah, really good jam session. Uh huh. <laughs> oh my god so i have a friend that is creating a demure remix for me oh my goodness and um he gave me a little sample the other day and it's um it's a lot of tribal tribal beats oh wow and i and i he said well what would you like and i said i want tribal beats and and i want jazz horns and oh wow i i want it to be very demure and mindful this is going to be lovely. Yeah, and my tagline is, I'm Ms. Demure, and I've always been mindful. <laughs> no, actually, I'm the OG Demure, and I've always been mindful. I've always been And so mindful. it's it's like a loop, and you've got the jazz horns and, and the uh, the bongos or the, you know. <laughs> and there, I there's don't a think slow my hair is looking so spelled. I love right it. Now. I love it. <laughs> it's very sophisticated. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. It's like Audrey Hepburn when she had her short, you know. Yeah, I love, I love the pixie. This mm -hmm. is an old cut for me, but I'm still getting used timeless. to this one. But it's timeless. Well, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, timeless. Exactly, exactly. So we have a lot to talk about here because we're about to get really deep right now. <laughs> and um, because I want to inform our public, you know, this is we're having girl talk right now, and... And um, we want to make sure that all of our sisters are going to be at the polls <laughs> on November the 5th. Yeah. Now, what is your perspective on that? My perspective on yeah, the vote? Yeah, mm. um, I love voting. Mm -hmm. When I, um, I, I, there are photographs of me voting. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. Um, Aaron, uh, best friends for life, uh -huh. uh, has pictures of me voting uh, that he would snap <laughs> while I was voting. Because when I go, um, when I go, I, I have the pencil, right? And you know how you can say all this this party. Pick your party. You know, uh -huh. you can just fill in the one dot. Uh -huh. No! No. No. No, not just that. No. No, no you you got a lot to I say. I am going to fill in every single dot for each individual person because they matter and what they're doing matters. And well, so yeah. I am like oh, <laughs> filling in that dot. And and I will feel the suffragettes behind me. Oh, that's and I lovely. Will be thinking that's lovely. Of them. I will be thinking of how they took food up the nose for me. Um, and I will fill in each single vote and I will do my research. Um, and I will explode mm. into just joy, just absolute joy as i vote oh my god bravo i am so glad that you said that and then oh my god and then aaron and i would leave the voting room uh-huh and we would take uh a selfie with the two of us where we're flashing the peace symbols right uh, the victory uh, and um and so now, like when I am on social media, right now obviously I'm not, but when I am on social media, uh, we, we, uh, 
will come up with all these memories, right, of the of the two of us like flashing our peace symbols every every vote. Yeah. Oh my god, and I love just, it. Like years of them now. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it's special. It feels really, really special, um, those stories. Lots That's wonderful. Stories. Now, I love to vote. Well, I really absolutely. do. I, love, I absolutely love to vote. Mm. Now, back in 2016, I, I volunteered for the, uh, for the Hillary campaign, mm -hmm. and I was down there answering phones and, mm -hmm. you know, doing my part and, and exercising my – birthright and this year it's going to be even more important you know i'm taping my halloween show in a couple of weeks and one of the costumes i'm thinking about having made i don't know if i'm going to have it made but i'd like to be dressed as a ballot box oh wow that's <laughs> but, gonna be fun yeah well we'll see we'll see how that goes but but another thing i want to do when i actually do vote i'm going to be thinking about the year that i was born 1965 and that was the year John Lewis, the Voting Rights Act. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like for me, mm -hmm. when I see young people, because I, you, you, you know I work at the Schuster, and I work, with, I work from people from my age to, to college age people, and we, we have these discussions about everything that's been going on in politics. And some of them, some of them they're my friends, and some of them, they're going to sit this one out. And so I give them my little, you know, my little um, story about how, since 1965 and I said if you decided you're going to sit it out mm -hmm. how do you think the way I look at that it, 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 it's very heartbreaking to me because mm -hmm. a lot of people in my community were not they've only been able to vote for a very short time and you and you have this privilege mm -hmm. and it's not like it's not like a menu at a restaurant you know like well i think i'll just have this on the side or <laughs> i just think you know what i'll i'll i mean you, you just can't look at it that way no i know i there is a part of me um i i was raised in in a very um in a home where i mean in a Republican household, really. Um, I was raised listening to Rush Limbaugh. Um, How suffocating. <laughs> I, I, it, is water, it was water off my back after a while. Wow. You, you know, I, 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 I tuned it out because the, the cruelty of him was just so evident to me. It was, it was a little confusing because uh, it was also a very religious household. It was one of those homes, you know? Um, and it, and it really was a mindset in, in the house. It was, it was my father's mind, my mindset, not, not my mother's, but she was very, she was too demure, right? To mm -hmm. the point of being too quiet yes. about, about her thoughts on all of this. But, uh, it really was this idea that we could take care of our, of each other, mm -hmm. that, that, you know, and that our, our religion and our spiritual beliefs were where that care came from and that we needed a small government so that we could autonomously care for each other. Uh, <laughs> that, that was the, the belief. And, and I was able to kind of roll with it for a while because my parents actually did do that. You know, we, we volunteered a lot. We, um, at different um, homes, you know, and events and um, that kind of thing. Uh, we, my the parents. The practice of being, living Christian life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My parents would bring home hitchhikers, you know. That's lovely. And, well, I don't. Uh, well, yeah, I mean. It uh, was uh, lovely. The but idea. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was lovely, but. <laughs> There are other stories I could tell about that that are not so lovely, oh. but um, you know it. So I was able to roll with it, and it, you know, when you're raised that way, um, I knew I was in a bubble that didn't sync up with the way the world was actually operating because I could see that not everybody was being cared for and it's a pretty tall order to expect individuals to be able to address every systemic need. <laughs> oh, so I, it was never it was never a fit.
it, right? Yeah. I, I always kind of saw through to that this is not, for me, it didn't seem effective. Yeah. And I, I'm still of that mind. But at the, at the same time, I could respect it. Yeah. I could respect it. Um, and, and that has certainly changed. The, the, that has changed. Well, and you know, you as you became older, you saw a whole different spectrum, and 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 boy, it must have been so. I mean, it, you had your eyes open early, and and the older you became, it's like, wow, it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I was teaching, you know, college students during the uh, the first. Hillary's campaign. I, 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 I was teaching and um, I had um, immigrant students whose parents, you know, they were scared of being sent back. I had black students who were terrified, you know, of what was happening. I, I, I had um, women in my classrooms who were terrified of what was going to happen and you know it it was it was a lot to teach those four years and then COVID on top of it 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 I there's something about all of that that I feel like I wish there had been a stronger a more nuanced conversation about psychological aspects of trauma mm -hmm. um, and and the fact that this country has been through multiple traumas since 2016 Just, and, oh my and, god never and like ending. we still kind of think through even COVID as like a physical kind of a thing mm -hmm. but the fact is that there there it's not just I mean long COVID is terrible I wouldn't wish it on anyone but um, teaching first year college students who spent the last two and a half years in virtual education, you know, and then they get, all of a sudden they're on a college campus and they, they don't even know like what a syllabus is or uh, they never even had the experience of high school. You know, it, 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 it's, these are immensely speaking of kind of ceremonies, right? High school, miserable as it is, is a ceremony for life. <laughs> it's like nobody can escape that one. Oh my god! And I am—I about... barely escaped. Yeah, I'm here to talk about it. Yes. I—I I mean, um, mm. yeah. It's oh, yeah. I, it's... I, that's that's kind of where my head is at when I think about these things. Mm -hmm. Is is you know, what's happening in Springfield right now. You oh. know, it was funny until it wasn't anymore. Yeah, it's just, you, you know, know it, but I'm so proud of the Springfield community. I mean, they are supporting these Haitians restaurants. A group of friends of mine, we're going to go to one soon, and, and, and mm -hmm. I can't wait. And I, I, you know what, they are just keeping their heads up high, and they are just, they're doing it. Mm -hmm. They are just, they're mm -hmm. showing their dignity. Yeah. And, 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 and what a lesson. What, you know, if you're young and, 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 and you're watching this right now, and, and, and go to Springfield and, and, <laughs> and support one of the Haitian restaurants, you know, just, just, just show people humanity. Yeah. I, I'm so proud of them right now. And, um, oh, I, you know, I, when I see stuff like that, I, I feel like, you know, even though this is another traumatic, rough patch that we're going through, I, I feel we're gonna make it through. I really do. I, 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 I you know, and and I believe that that in a few months mm -hmm. we could have our first mm -hmm. female president. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> I mean, did you watch the the uh, DNC convention? I watched clips of it the next day. Oh. I, uh, yeah, so I, my 
like I said, I I I have to be careful with myself. Oh when yeah, it comes absolutely. To that. Too m- I really I I really got wrapped up in it last time, and I I had a hard time getting myself out of it. Oh you yeah, know? and mm-hmm. so I I'm I uh, I did I watched the people I wanted to watch. Uh, and, it was and, and a few that I hadn't heard of. Yeah, it was it was just yeah. so well done, and mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. oh, you know, she, I tell you, she's killing it right now. Mm-hmm. She really is, you know. And um, I'm just, I'm just I'm I'm so proud that that President Biden, he did the right thing, you know, and um, I and he he did it with grace. I I I wish that. I wish that the people that were in his ear could have done a better job of, you know, he, he deserved the grace. I don't think he received the grace that he should have gotten for that. But you know what? He he did the patriotic thing, and now we can move forward, you know, and, and his legacy is going to be intact. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's all good. Mm-hmm. And so um, we have a lot of work to do. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of work to do. You have a lot of work to do. I have a lot of work to do. Yeah, just to, just to be an inspire inspiration. <laughs> we have. To I I don't know if I I aspire to be an inspiration as much as I aspire to make a difference. Mm-hmm. You know? Your girl power. Oh well, <laughs> uh, she they power uh. and. <laughs> <laughs> With the matrilineal line that includes the grandpa and my brother, you know, um, and uh, multi-layered and um, thinking, thinking pretty hard about the fights that I want to fight coming up. I really am going through a pretty, pretty intense phase right now of um, reflection. Yeah. Lots of writing. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Lots of skin shedding. Yeah. Can I ask you when you're when you're writing, uh-huh. is there a certain mu- type of music that you listen to? Well, other than you, well, you said you love the funk and everything. But <laughs> what 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 gets you really in the mood? Um, is there is there a certain artist or it's just a certain type of? I um I, it's it's rare that I listen to music while I'm writing. Um, I definitely don't listen to funk and punk while I'm writing. You know, whatever gets to, you know. Yeah, I definitely, that, if I'm listening to funk and punk, that's all that matters. (laughs) Exactly, yeah. It's not, not writing music for me. That, Uh that is, Rachel's gonna move now. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Like like, when I become. A little more embodied. (laughs) When I'm, when I'm getting ready to be Ms. Demure, I'm going through the whole process. Yeah. I have to listen to Diana Ross and the Supremes. It just oh. gets me in, in that mode, you know? Okay. And um, it's just certain tunes that I listen to and it, and it gets my uh, endorphins going mm. and then I become her. That's lovely. Yeah. Um, when I wake up in the morning, I usually want to write. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will have two cups of coffee. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will light candles, and I will write. And um, it's sometimes it 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 is about the language that's coming out. And what's interesting is I've been journaling now for so long that a lot of times I don't I don't really know what's going to come out of the pen necessarily. It's it. But it's like I'm hardwired, and it's unconscious until it's on the page. Mm -hmm. And I tend to trust the process just because I will always know that there are pages and pages. I mean, at this point, like, I've got crates of journals that go back to, like, Rachel's 10 years old, you know. Oh, wow. Journaling. Um, But... Um, it, it feels solid to me, you know, but it, 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 it is, I don't think of language in the biblical sense. I, I have, uh, you know, I said, let there be light. And so there is light, (laughs) (laughs) you know, 
uh, language is always moving and it is very transient and it moves you from one place to the next and just because I stopped talking or there is silence doesn't mean that that ripple isn't still moving through the room mm -hmm. you know and um, I don't think of language as as frozen in time or even stable um, it is like a waterfall to me that is always and and sometimes I bring um, the pen to paper and capture it on the page but just because I stop writing doesn't mean that movement isn't still happening mm -hmm. right and and so it's just about tuning into a level of awareness that I carry inside of me that has a way out um, and I learn things about myself by writing and I trust sleep um, to to bring up the topic I trust silence to bring up the topic and so I write in the morning and um, I will. Do you write, write while you're dreaming? So you you write when you're. If dreaming? If I have a dream, yeah, I'll yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll record it. Um, I'll use writing prompts sometimes. Oh wow, fascinating! I, I love reading my zodiac in the morning, and uh -huh. so if there are questions in my zodiac, I'll use those sometimes as a writing prompt. Uh -huh. But sometimes I'll wake up and I'll feel something pressing on me, you know, that needs out, that wants out, and so I will write it and it will come out, and and I'll learn. Mm -hmm. uh, something about myself and I, I tend to have the courage to follow through on it now the the, the problem I've, I've realized is that um, sometimes I need to uh, pause and realize that in journals uh, when I'm writing this way I am the audience and it, it's not necessarily the a message that others are receptive to or that's really even ready for other people uh, <laughs> and and that that when I'm writing a lot uh, becomes hard for me to remember. I forget, and and that's when I will cross boundaries that should not be crossed sometimes, or I find myself on a stage where I'm saying something that feels perfectly natural, well thought out, um, and other people are like. What the fuck? <laughs> and then I'm like, ooh, I'm in trouble now. Uh, I'm in trouble now. Um, and and when I go through phases like what I, what I'm in right now, and I'm just writing a lot, mm -hmm. I, I have to I, I have to do better work at remembering that sometimes. So. Is there a book that you want to get published on the horizon? Well, not on the horizon. I mean, that, that sounds future. like tomorrow morning. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, <laughs> no, not tomorrow morning, but yeah. in, in maybe three to five years. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So much change is happening right now, Mr. Yeah. Muir. You well, know, you have so much material. I have I have entirely too much material. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and for the longest, that's a lot of editing. <laughs> <laughs> for the longest time, I was just like, I don't know how to come up with a beginning, middle, and end. I got, I got nothing. Like, I, I can just give you toilet paper rolls of my life, you know, just like never A lot, lot of chapters, a lot of chapters, yeah. Jack Kerouac used to write at the toilet, supposedly. But anyway, um, I, uh, yeah, I don't, it, 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 yes, I have. I have a book idea. It's it, it life moves so fast for me sometimes with these transitions that I that I seem to mm -hmm. catch myself in that what happens to me a lot of times is I move through the idea so quickly, so quickly and I'm on to something new, you know. And do you go back and revisit those ideas? No, I get too wrapped up in the present uh, moment. I, I, you know, and I'm writing in the now. I, I, I remember 
I remember when I was in graduate school and and there was such an emphasis, you know, because I was getting a PhD in literature on publication. And I, I just felt like there was something wrong with me that I could not produce a publication that I really cared about. I just, I couldn't. And it really had to do with audience and not really... I, I, I don't care if people read my work. I would rather perform it for them. Mm -hmm. I loved going to conferences and presenting, but if I had to publish something, I really was not, I lost interest in it. And um, I think that's just the theater kid in me, you know, I mean. So you constantly have to be inspired. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it, it's it's the now moment of mm -hmm. like what ha like what it means for how I'm able to live, you know. Like I think of my me, my body, and the way I experience my life as the work of art. Like I don't necessarily think of the pages I've written as the work of art. Mm -hmm. I, You're living it. Yes, I would rather live living it. art. And, yes, and I remember like one of my therapists said to me at one point because I, I I said. Um, something like really I was going through something very 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 sad in high school it was just very sad and I did not write for those four years and it didn't it didn't occur to me that I wasn't writing I just mm -hmm. stopped writing and I never really even realized it and and six months later um, in college um, uh, at the end of my first semester um, all of a sudden, um, I realized I have not been writing. I have not recorded anything about this experience I've been having with this person. There's no record of her anywhere on the written paper. And all I knew was that I had to go audition for a play. I just knew and it's because of her that I auditioned for my first play and eventually, you know, had the courage really to declare drama as my major and became the theater kid I always wanted to be. It was that first connection there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and um, yeah, it's just writing to become alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what would you say to your high school self? What advice would you give her? Cherish every moment. Mm -hmm. Cherish every moment. Mm -hmm. That's and she's going to make it, right? And she did make it. Yeah, she made it. Yeah. She made it. I've always wanted to have the power to go through a time warp and just to go back and, and comfort myself and, and just let myself know I, that I eventually will be able to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, I remember I, I taught high school for four years after I finished my bachelor's, that drama degree, and I created mm -hmm. that, that, I think I talked about this my first visit with you, um, was I created a drama program, right, at, at a small parochial high school and it's my first experience in project creation and management and uh, I really loved it world building and all those things and um, I, I remember the stereotype of high school kids acutely you know, and and how offensive I found it. This idea that high school kids are uh, think they're going to live forever, and I'm like, that's not the experience these kids are having. The experience these kids are having is the loss of childhood, and and coming to grips with the fact that adulthood is around the corner. It, it, it is how terrifying it that was. It is terrifying. It yeah. is. It, it, they are struggling with their own mortality, and it is. A and really coming from a dysfunctional yes. environment and trying to process all of that at, 
at yes. once. And, it's just and so we disturbing. treat them as if they're, especially seniors who are who 17, 18 years old, we treat them as if their frontal lobe is fully developed. And we know it's not fully developed mm-hmm. until you're in your 20s, yeah. you know. 22 for young women and and 25 for young men you know well in some cases 40 you know, yeah well that's true too but the frontal lobe is the last part of your brain to fully develop and there are even arguments now that it's not even fully matured until 30 so you know this is this is college age this is post college we're talking about oh wow yeah now, come on um, and and I think, you know, we know these things. Can I tell you something, Ms. Demure? Absolutely. Every morning I'm writing. I sit on my sofa. It's 6 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. And a school bus rumbles down the street. It is dark out. It's Westwood. Now, what the heck is a poor <laughs> kid in Westwood having to get on a bus... At 6.30 in the morning, at night, like, like there's research that tells you they need to be sleeping. Oh, my time. God. Yes. It's just like, why do we do this to ourselves? Oh. We do, you know, I mean, I'm they're not back, functioning already. Well, I'm thinking back to where we started this conversation about <laughs> kindness. kindness. Yes. I'm like, this is unkind. This is not kind. And there's also evidence that high school students in particular need to be sleeping in. That is their (laughs) biorhythm. I'm just saying. Read the science, people. Just putting it out there, folks. You wanted to talk about politics, and I'm like, let the kids sleep. A lot of them are sleeping too much, but that's a whole nother. Sleeping in class, maybe, because yes. they, you know, they're tired. Yeah. They're tired. They need to be able to express themselves. They need to be able to know that that they matter and their creativity matters. And, and, and if they explore that part, then everything else is sort of gravy, right? And it'll fall into place. And I think right now in this world, it's it's such a hard fit for them. It's 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 almost impossible, you know. And and, and how do we sort of navigate that so they can be fulfilled in that way? So they they can be the best versions of who they are and and and, and um, just flourish. Yeah. And be alive and and also be productive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to do when you're a kid and you have no control over your environment. Oh my God, oh, it, it's really hard. I'm to reliving do. that. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and and I think, you know, it to I feel like so many of us get stuck. We can get stuck in this idea that where where you feel yourself kind of go back to that place where you feel like you can't influence your own environment. Oh my God! How profound, you know, and and you're subjected to it. Yeah, and and that's really frightening. And people feel that way in their careers. You know, mm-hmm. their 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 work environment. It, it takes them back to the way they felt when they were younger, and and, and their mm-hmm. household, and just school, and all of that. And right, just because trying it's to all it's a power dynamic. Exactly, and yeah. and we're like these, you know, the, these robots. You know, mm-hmm. we're just. We're doing our routine every day, and 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 it and to a certain extent, it, it's killing us. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, it makes me think about how I just love my privacy and my, you know, my solitude. Yeah, and to ha- yeah. and to give yourself time to kind of have that solitude, that space for yourself, where you, you can find your own rhythm again. You can hear your own thoughts, and those become dominant rather than all the other voices in the room. Exactly. And and then you can come back. You can come back to the living. It's not like people, you know, disappear on you or anything. And I want to get better at that because. It's not that I don't have the tools, and, and but sometimes the tools get rusty. And, and when that's happening and, and all these distractions start to come to a head, and even though you're trying to 
use those tools you know it's harder to enjoy all the good things that are coming your way because it's just you the noise just yeah. getting rid of the noise yeah, yeah. and yeah. i've been struggling with that lately even though i have those tools yeah yeah mm -hmm. but it hasn't stopped us and because we're here talking about it i think when you talk about it you know it's 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 you know, a friend of mine, he um, he does stand up, and and uh, you know, we a few weeks ago, Wiley's Comedy Club. You know, they finally closed the doors forever, which is one of the oldest comedy clubs in Ohio. And I actually uh, did stand up there a couple of times in, mm -hmm. in my early early drag, and um, just remember being up there on stage, and just having that that connection with people showing my real self just being up there being totally real and not trying to be funny just being real mm -hmm. and and we, we it's just something we have to do in our every if you're if you if you continue to live a real authentic life all those rewards are going to come with you and 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 the tools the tools they they become better tools right mm -hmm. just being authentic mm-hmm so we're being authentic right now. Even with me struggling through having those moments of struggle, as long as I'm authentic about it, you know, I, I get to, to, to repair myself and mm -hmm. recover a lot faster. Yeah. What do you think of that? That's how you do it. Yeah. I, I think it's, I, I, re, I've reflected on this a lot since our last conversation, because I remember we were talking about, you know, trusting the universe and and one of the things that i said at that point is that it can be really hard to do that if if you're literally in an if you're in an unsafe space and and um it, it particularly with kids you know and if that is your formational sense of reality it can take a a lot of work to dismantle those feelings of unsafety yeah and um and our safe spaces are always changing yes and vocabularies are changing and you you as you're getting to know people you don't necessarily know how they're going to respond to who you are, what you're saying, or, or, or how you're communicating, and, and yet it is your authentic expression. And, and Especially in today's world, because like you were saying earlier, you know, we, we were talking about this, about how since COVID, a lot of our society, they've become like feral cats. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of feral behavior going on yeah. right now. Well, I feel like that's something that we haven't actually talked about necessarily. Yeah. It, it is is potentially, potentially, again, I'm not a scientist, haven't done the research. I'm, I'm just spinning here, you know. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm experimenting with an idea that I will write about tomorrow morning, <laughs> um, which is this idea that we have this the violence that we see is actually it is aggressive I, i'm not trying to diminish any of that but it's also a defensive act by people who feel like they're under threat somehow mm -hmm. right and 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 so they they do not feel safe and that is a trauma response and and so i feel like we I just wish we had a, a kind of respect <laughs> for, for that fact, you know. Um, I don't, don't think people have the attention span to, to yeah, appreciate that. I don't that. know. You know, it's amazing to me. Here, here's a story. This is a small example of what, what I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, I remember the first time I taught um, the autobiography of Malcolm X um, to some of my university students. And I had um, a, a student come up to me after class 
And she said, um, Dr. Z, I was Dr. Z back then, Dr. Z, I, um, I'm really scared to read this book. And I could look at her and I could, I could see, <laughs> I could, she was being very genuine, very authentic with me. She was genuinely frightened of reading this book. And I said, why, what is frightening to you about this book? And she said, my father has warned me against this book since I was a little kid. He told me that he calls white people devils, and which oh. he does do. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> he, does, he does do that oh in, the, in the map and the autobiography. <laughs> Oh. And, I, and what I said to the student, I said, you know, I said, um, why don't you read just the first three chapters and then come back to me? I said, because I think if you read the first three chapters, you'll understand why he calls white people devils. Oh, wow. And, and I said, and then, and then we'll talk some more. Yeah. And she did. And she came back to me like the next class. And she said, Dr. Z, thank you for asking me to read those chapters. Now... Here's the thing. Um, she was having a trauma response. She was also exhibiting symptoms of racism. Like, that was racism. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my. Yeah. That was racism. And, and th I bring this up as an example of the fact that some of these things are trauma-bound. And we have never... In my opinion, I, I just we just don't conceive of systemic violence and the history of this nation in those terms, as as far as the the white community, you know that this too is a symptom of racism. You cannot commit these horrifyingly violent acts. And not have killed your own soul in some way. You cannot. Yeah. You cannot. And I I just I think we we gloss over it and the what we tend to call whitewashing is is clear in a conscience that will never be clear until we really grapple with these things. Now that's just a very small example of a student, right? Mm -hmm. But I think um, it's one example of kind of what I see moving. It's, it's devastating. And COVID happened and yeah. there was all of that and, and the, uh, you know, so I, I just think there's, there's so a many vocabulary layers. that we don't necessarily have. I, there are academic circles that have it, but they're not popular in the U.S., to yeah. be honest. They're mm -hmm. popular in Europe, but um, yeah. Boy, I went deep. <laughs> that got dark. Ask and you shall receive. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, this is, this needs to be talked about. I mean, this is, this is what we do, and, and we're, we're here to inform and and um chat and and experience and and live and i'll write more about that tomorrow yeah I, yeah i mean i'm not offering it up as an answer or anything it's it's no but it's just our perspective some ideas yeah. that i'm exploring and that mm -hmm. i have explored and who knows Ms. demure maybe they'll wind up in a book in three to five years <laughs> yeah <laughs> Immortalized. Uh, I'll, immortalized. I'll, I'll, I'll yes. have to footnote you or something. <laughs> yes. Immortalized, yes. Uh, oh, that goodness. wouldn't be altogether a bad thing. So oh. yeah. <laughs> what is on your schedule this week? Um lots of writing, lots of reflection, mm -hmm. um, reading some workshops, uh for um, people who are writing grants, just mm -hmm. to kind of help them with the writing process. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the typical work stuff, networking, meeting people. I'm, I'm new to Dayton, you know? I mean, I've only been up here two years, really. 
And uh, I'm really enjoying meeting people now that I have a house here and I can call myself a resident in, in true form. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm super excited about that. Uh, I've been going to Levitt um, Pavilion um, whenever there's funk and punk. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for other things as well. But I also, I need to find like, you know, where the music is. I need to f- figure that out and, mm. um, you know, hopefully meet some people that I don't work with. You know, mm. I lo- like I said, I love my workmates, but like social circles. Oh, know, absolutely. I kind of have, mm-hmm. have to broaden my, mm-hmm. my, um, my friend list. <laughs> well, I have an invitation for you if you're interested. Okay. So um, November the second, um, I have I have uh, booked an event at the uh, trolley stop, which is going to become the the Regal Beagle, and we're going to have a Mrs. Roper's drag show. Oh! So all the Mrs. Ropers will be up there on stage performing disco numbers, <laughs> and we're asking people to dress up as Jack, Janet, Chrissy. <laughs> okay, I got you. So if you can make it, it's going to be a happy hour. Okay. From 5 to 7 on Saturday, November the 2nd. And so, um, you know, we just want to have a fun party and celebrate and, um, you know, just and put on our... And come as a roper? Is yeah, come on, saying? put your caft in. You're and, trying to rope me in. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and if you want to get up on stage and, and do a disco number, it's, all, it's totally oh, up to goodness. you. Oh, my goodness. But it's going to be a hoot nanny, so I'm excited about <laughs> a it. So. Nanny. But right. will you do me a favor? What's the favor? Will you come back on here again? You know I will. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. And you know what? I can't wait to see what you're going to write because we want we want some samples on social media. Just uh, like a little sample. I told you I went away from social okay. media. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm uh, not an introvert this will mode. be on social media. <laughs> I'm in introvert mode uh, right now. I'm okay. in introvert mode right now. I'll come back. I'll come back when I'm ready. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me, Mr. Anytime, anytime. Bye, everyone. It was lovely to spend time with you. Thank you so much, and we will be right back.